Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. Today is Sunday, June 20th, and I would like to wish everybody out there a happy Father's Day. I know we've got a lot of dads. Uh, we hear them on our weekly calls sometimes crying in the background or playing or doing something. So, uh, you know, awesome to have a, a great day like this to celebrate our dads. Uh, so big, big shout out to all the dads out there listening. Uh, and my dad, too. You know, I've lost him a while back uh, and uh, certainly think about him every day. He was the best. Uh, certainly uh, proud of him. He was a Marine, uh, fought in the Korean War, and he uh, was a basketball coach, of course, uh, and just an, an awesome, awesome person and uh, really appreciative that I had him as a role mo model growing up. So, Joe Sr., I miss you, and I'll I'm sure I'll see you again. Uh, for everybody else out there, hey, you know, enjoy this day. Enjoy it with your dads if you still have them uh, because they're, you know, uh, they're not going to be there forever. And you got to take advantage of that time. And then for a lot of you that have little ones, uh, really enjoy them, too, because they grow up so darn fast. And then, uh, you know, they're on to live their own lives. So uh, beautiful day today. Exciting. We've got two fantastic NBA games that I'm here to discuss today. We've got a game one, uh, which plays first. It's a 3.30 p.m. Eastern game. It's the Los Angeles Clippers at the Phoenix Suns. And, of course, you know, the big story here is more of who's not playing than who is playing. Uh, for the Clippers, we know that Kawhi is out with a possible ACL tear. And for Phoenix... Chris Paul, after, excuse me, after that wonderful performance, uh, he tested positive for COVID. So he is in COVID protocol. So it's, you know, the question is, got a whole different look here with these two, two uh, guys out and with the new matchup. So we'll talk about that a bit. Uh, Vegas line right now are uh, good friends and one of our sponsors, betus.com.pa. Uh, they have this as Phoenix Suns minus four, and the total is 221 and a half. Uh, the second game is at 8 p.m. this evening, and it is game seven. So we're going to hopefully have as exciting of a game as we had yesterday with, with Brooklyn uh, you know, and uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. What a crazy, uh, fun game to watch that was. And I think, you know, the atmosphere in Philadelphia is going to be completely electric. It's, it's going to be fun. But it's, it's, of course, the Atlanta Hawks at the, at the Philadelphia 76ers. In this one, Philly uh, is favored by seven. So definitely thinking uh, Philly pulling out game six is going to come back and, and, uh, and pretty much dominate this game seven. So that'll be very interesting. The over-under is 216, so it is five and a half points lower than game one, uh, Los Angeles and Phoenix. The only other injury out of this whole board here, because I refuse to mention Embiid questionable because, you know, he's, he play, he's played every game. And the funny one is Trey Smith probable. Okay, I'm going to fade, or Trey Young, not Trey Smith, Trey Young. So let's fade Trey Young because he's probable, right? So don't even mention it. Uh, no, the, the big one, though, is Atlanta. Uh, Bogdanovich is questionable. He got hurt in the either third or fourth quarter of that last game and didn't finish down the stretch and is a legit questionable. So that's an important one to know because he's got the second most shot attempts on that team. All right, we'll get to that one when we get to that one. How does that sound? Let's start out with game one. And it is... The, the first game of the series, Clippers and Phoenix. Now, you know, let's look at clip the Clippers first. We had the performance of a lifetime for Mr. Terrence Mann. Uh, he's just recently been inserted into that starting lineup. But who saw this coming to close out their last series? He was 15 for 21, 7 of 10 from 3, 2 for 2 from the line, 39 points. This is a guy that wasn't even getting uh, many minutes. So you talk about a miraculous game. Um, 
I, I think we'll see a, just a smidgen of regression there, but you know, still well in play, no question about it. And uh, again, if he has half those stats, he's paying his number. So uh, man certainly in play here. Uh, you know, the question is, are they going to go small ball in this series against DeAndre Ayton? They did it against Gobert. Uh, you know, he's not quite the offensive threat that Ayton is. So, you know, we need to study this throughout uh, the day and get uh, a really final starting lineup and try to pull any, you know, coach speak we can on this because they, c- they could go big and put Zubats back in the starting lineup. It's possible. Um, I don't believe they will. I think they stick with this small lineup that's gotten them to this point. So I'm, I'm assuming Man, Morris, Batum, uh, George, and Jackson start. And really the only guy that got minutes the last go around was Patrick Beverly, who played a, a pretty healthy 27 minutes off the bench. Nobody else came into play. Uh, you know, they, they went with six guys and, and rolled it out. Now, I think we may see a little Zubats here, though, and probably sprinkle in a little Rondo and Kennard. Um, you know, again, not that those that were just mentioned will have enough minutes to uh, make my lineup, <clears throat> but I think that, you know, they will be the bench guys that do get in. Uh, my, you know, my theory yesterday and what I'm trying to switch to uh, really worked. I mean, I, I know yet yeah, it was tough. Giannis had a phenomenal game and I had faded him, but I did it in lieu of making sure that all the guys I got in my lineup were going to play big minutes. And everybody that I used played over 33 minutes. So just by the fact that they're on the floor, good, bad, or indifferent, ended up making a huge difference. And I cashed uh, because of that. So Uh, My strategy is going to remain the same is, you know, try not to have to reach for the long shot guys that you're just praying are going to get in there. Like I said, the the Zubots, the Rondos, the Canards, you know, there's those type of guys for every team. And if we can avoid them, then let's do that. And again, it's going to be a hard fade of, of one of the better players Uh, It's just, you know, there's not too many ways around it, but uh, I think it pays off in the long run. you got to look at it as a mix. Now, the other fantastic thing that I'm excited about is this is a two-game slate, so you don't have to have the little showdown deal uh, where it's a different strategy. I like being able to build out uh, my team with, uh, you know, four teams that are playing, so my you know, I'll be able to to spread out some of that uh, value, but not the bench value that, that doesn't hardly get into the games uh, just by fading one of the top couple of guys. And that's the strategy I'm sticking with because, um, you know, it's been a weird playoffs. The benches are smaller than I've ever remembered. Of course, uh, the benches get smaller in the playoffs. You know, they, the coaches play less guys and the, the more important guys play bigger minutes, but it's gotten to be sort of crazy. It's, you know, between injuries, COVID and everything else, teams are shorthanded as it is. And, you know, for that reason, I think what they're doing is, is really letting their main guys roll. So let's, let's use that theme to start talking about some builds here. Uh, on on the Clippers side, Terrence Mann certainly in play. His price is still fair. Certainly don't expect anywhere near what he did that game, but in, in contention for my roster. Same thing goes with Moore Sr. Uh, he had a, a very quiet game this last game out, only three for seven from the field. But I think that he's, uh, you know, he's a key guy for them. They need him to produce. Uh, double-double kind of stuff, and I think he's very capable uh, of that. Uh, You've got a a Nicholas Batum who's really adjusted to playing somewhat center, believe it or not. Um, You know, not a ton of shots, but he does get rebounds and contributes uh, all the way around with some stocks and certainly has a chance as a value play to make uh, my lineup. Uh, I'm starting my my build today with uh, Paul George. I mean, no mystery there. I just think he's the man. I mean, with Kawhi out, I expect him to get 25 to 30 shots. 
uh, huge minutes, probably 45 plus. And I think that he's he's just a key guy that is a, a good roster starter that you can't avoid. Uh, used to just through the roof with Kawhi off the floor. Uh, huge in play for me. Um, Reggie Jackson also, you know, I've used him a lot at, at point guard. Point guard position scarcity is a real thing on uh, FanDuel. So he, at his price, has been a good option. And I think he will remain that. So I will have definitely uh, two, two, possibly three, but more than likely two of these Clippers uh, start my lineup. All right, on the Phoenix side, you know, it's pretty simple. We've, we've got the situation here where, uh, you know, we know that Chris Paul is out and it leaves you a couple of different options. Um, Booker is going to be the spot that most people go. Um, I think that it's very logical. He's probably going to get a lot of combination defense of, of uh, Paul George, Pat Beverly. You know, he'll get some good D and they'll run some doubles at him. And I think he's certainly a guy that's in consideration. Not sure if he's going to be the stud guy that I fade in order to make everything else work, but he is definitely uh, an option here for me. After that, I think, you know, my favorite son in this game is Cam Johnson. You know, the fact that, that uh, he's played great minutes as Chris Paul's backup uh, and with Paul being out, I think he takes, a huge role here and he steps right in and takes shot big shots. He is not afraid of the moment at all. I think he's a great play at his price and he'll be in all my lineups. Uh, the only other Phoenix guys I'm looking at, to be honest with you is, uh, you know, I, I'm not crazy about Aiton uh, just because of his price. And I know that he's, this is a good spot for him, but I think not having Chris Paul out there, is going to hurt him the most because uh, Paul creates the most opportunities for all their guys, including the big man. So I think he's he's probably going to uh, have the toughest time uh, making any, my lineup anyway. Jay Crowder, I think, is playable at his price. He hustles. This is right up his alley. It's sort of Morris against Crowder is sort of the Spider-Man versus Spider-Man thing. You got two clutch, physical, intense guys that can knock down some threes and get it done. So, uh, you know, that's what I'm looking at uh, for for their side of the ball. Not going to go real heavy uh, on Phoenix, but I will definitely have probably half my roster spots uh, taken up in this game. I think it's a good even split. Uh, this game is, again, five and a half higher points uh, based on the Vegas lines. But I think that you really can uh, count on both – both games being fairly close, uh, and I think both games stay tight enough that you don't have to avoid or stack anybody out of the group, but it's probably going to be best to have exposure all the way around. All right, quick sip of coffee, and we'll go on to game two. All right, uh, game seven. We have a phenomenal, exciting game, Atlanta at Philadelphia. And this place is going to be rocking and rolling. They're going to be blowing the roof off of that, that arena right there. So it's, it should be great. Uh, I agree with Vegas to some extent. Philly has all the momentum. Um, that game six win in Atlanta was just enormous. And I think they, they have the upper hand here without question. Um, Joel Embiid, I mean, what can you say? The man is unbelievable. He didn't have as good of a game as normal, but still 22 points, 13 rebounds uh, in 38 minutes. And now he's got a game seven in Philly. Uh, you got to love him. He's got to be considered as a strong uh, possibility for your lineup. I think the, the three guys that I can't avoid, basically, uh, but... I'm going to try to figure out how to sit one of them, and I haven't made that decision yet. Um, obviously, Paul George, and then uh, you've got Trey Young, and then, of course, as I just said here, uh, Joel Embiid. Those are probably the three top guys, Booker being a close fourth. 
But I, I really think you only can can have two of these top three and not have to have real garbage on your, uh, you know, to finish out your roster of guys that can get five fantasy points. So uh, not sure which one. Probably not going to fo- uh, uh, avoid uh, and beat. He just he's he's too dominant. Uh, I think he comes out and plays a, a great game here. Um, and it's it's really hard, you know, because if the game stays as close as the line says, which seven, you know, that's still tight. I think Embiid gets huge minutes. Uh, I think that it's important that that uh, you know that he comes out and just gives it gives it his all. I know he's playing hurt with that slightly torn meniscus, but I don't think it affects him enough uh, to to have a poor game. I mean, we've seen him sort of labor around out there a little bit, but, you know, he's he's just uh, too powerful, too dominant. So more than likely, he's in there. Um, and then, you know, looking at the value here, Cork Maz, 22 minutes, uh, you know, not as good of a game, but he did get some ancillary stats. So he's in consideration. Tobias Harris at his price, he's a tremendous player, but he has not had a tremendous series. So I'm, I'm more... More so not going there, and I, I like Tobias a lot. I just can't go there. Uh, I think anybody that listens to this podcast on a regular basis knows my feelings about Ben Simmons. I know he's always a, a triple-double possibility, but, you know, only got six shots up, which is, you know, he just doesn't get that many shots up. And they may do the hack of Simmons thing again. Uh, possibly he's not making foul shots, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, you know, the, the big thing here is Tyrese Maxey. I mean, you know, was that a fluke? Did he, did he really, uh, have a great game and going to get enough minutes to have another great game? Or was that because Simmons, you know, sat a decent amount, uh, had some foul trouble issues. So I'm not just immediately putting Tyrese Maxey into my lineup. I think he'll be extremely high owned at his price. I think he's a decent play. But because of leverage and everything else, I may not roster him here. I don't think he gets 30 minutes. I, uh, I mean, that was an aberration. I think he gets more like 18 or 20, um, you know. But certainly in consideration, I think he's very talented without question. Uh, he's the only guy off the bench that I would consider. Um, the guy that I, I think will also be popular and he deserves to be is Seth Curry. He's been knocking down shots at a really high percentage, playing very good basketball, and they do go to him in a lot of clutch situations. So for me, it's I'm all about Joel. I think Cork Maz and uh, Maxi and also Curry are the, the second flight guys that I'm looking at a combination of one or even two of those guys to make my roster. All right, on the other side of the ball, of course, we have Atlanta. Um, what can you say about Trey Young? I mean, uh, it's unbelievable. Another 30-shot attempt game. Uh, hit some massively important shots. Double-digit assists again. Uh, you know, he certainly has won my respect over, and they just have not figured out uh, how to stop him. Simmons, uh, who's first team all defense, it just came out this week. But he's not stopping Trey Young. So, uh, I'm not sure if they're going to double him or just let Simmons take on the responsibility again. But, uh, you know, Trey's got to be in consideration. I mean, he is by far the leader on this team, especially with Bogdanovich questionable. So if Bogey plays, you know, he's going to take uh, some of those shots. But if he's out, then Trey Young, who got 30 shots the last game, should get shots in the 30s again unless they run some type of a weird defense against him. So uh, this this should be interesting. I think he deserves to make a lot of rosters. Um, there's no question that that he can be one of the higher scorers on the slate. Uh, Kevin Herter is in play. Uh, he, he was uh, 7 for 15 from the field, did very well. And uh, trivia question for you, and you should get it now that I just said Kevin Herter, who had the most minutes in the last game for the Hawks? Correct, Trevor, Kevin Herter, 44 minutes, 13 seconds. He played four minutes, two seconds, even more than Trey Young. 
So if he's getting those kind of minutes, he grabs rebounds, he gets assists, and he can score. He's a pretty easy play at his price. Uh, I faded John Collins last time. I don't trust him. Like I've always said on this show, he can break a slate or break your heart. And two for eight this last game, um, really uh, questionable. I'm not going to go there at his price. Clint Capella has been solid, but not enough really to pay off his salary uh, by much. Uh, 14 and 11 isn't bad, but again, there's always the chance he gets in foul trouble uh, trying to guard and bead and just don't want to spend up for him at that spot. Uh, I need to, the news on Bogdanovich, if he's going to play at all, if he's, uh, you know, if he isn't going to play at all, then I think it, it does bring Lou Williams into the discussion because those guard minutes are going to have to go somewhere. Now I, I uh, faded Lou the last time. I thought it was a trap play, and he was over five. I mean, it just happens so much in uh, DFS where a guy will have big game, the whole industry jumps on him, and then he rolls out a bad one. But there is a possibility as a super value guy, if if I do want to buy up for one more spot, that he has the potential to get enough minutes to get some fantasy points, but only if Bogdanovich is out. Um, Gallinari, not a, a great game for him because he didn't get the rebounds that he normally gets, but you know, he is going to get that mid 20s minutes off the bench, so you know, he is uh, a bit in consideration. But I think you know, start with Herter and, and Young, uh, and then you build down from there. So that's what I am looking at for this exciting two game uh, NBA Sunday, Father's Day. Uh, should be extremely exciting and really good games. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, this is a perfect time. Uh, you'll hopefully listen to this in the morning here on Sunday so that you can prepare properly for that uh, two-game slate. Uh, I think you know we do one of the best jobs, if not the best job in the industry, at providing uh, players strategy. You know, we do an uh, analytic analysis and a certainly uh, a hand build of all of our lineups. You know, we do things a little differently here. We have our own process and it's very successful. So come and join us, dfscoachtalk.com. You can join for as little as three day pass for $10, or we have a great deal on our two month pass for 111. And when you get Coach Talk, you become a member, you get everything that we have all of our golf, all of our baseball, all of our basketball, and then down the road here, football as well. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, quick thumbs up, subscribe. We're really close to our goal. We need you to hit that subscribe button. That's key for us. Really helps us go up in the algorithms on YouTube and, and get some more attention and views. And then while you're at it, click the little alert button up in the top corner. That'll let you know when any of our podcast posts. So fantastic uh, Sunday here. Uh, happy Father's Day to uh, some of our Coach Talk staff, Andrew, Tyler, uh, I think are our other two dads. So big uh, shout out to you guys. And of course, all our members, because uh, we have the best community in this industry, bar none. Big happy Father's Day to all the dads. Uh, that we've got out there uh, also. So let's crush it today. It's a nice two-game slate, which I like much better. Uh, we provide full lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo, and you'll get uh, a core group for both cash and GPP on DraftKings. So we set our members up the best possible uh, to win and for some takedowns. So uh, that is it. If you're watching this on uh, the on different podcast uh, outlets like Podbean, Stitcher, iHeart, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Please take a second, give us five stars and a quick uh, couple co a comment, just a couple words. Even we have a drawing for a, a free week membership um, for Coach Talk, and that is in seven days from now. So uh, get in there. It's a random drawing for anybody that's given us five stars and a quick comment on any of those podcast uh, arenas. So that is it, my friends. 
we are uh, excited for this day. We think we're going to crush it. We've got great baseball throughout the day. Uh, and then we also have the final round of the U.S. Open, which is completely up for grabs. So uh, it is, I'm going to be parked in front of my couch for the most part, checking out all this action, posting lineups, and really enjoying a fun Father's Day. And then I get to meet up with my kids tonight uh, to grab some dinner. So perfect day. So I hope everybody else enjoys it as well. And we certainly will be back tomorrow. Andrew will be back with me. And we will be looking to crush it in DFS.